Hey, it's Matt with McGee Farms, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of work on my Jeep today. And uh, I was planning on making a video about the Jeep. I love this Jeep. I'm original owner. I've had this since 2006. This is a 2006 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. It's the uh, basically the Jeep TJ model that's been stretched out three and a half feet. You can haul a little bit more of a trailer. You got more room in the back, but all in all, I just, I love this thing. They only made them two and a half years. They made about 30, 40,000 of them. Uh, so there's not like a ton out there. And I've tried to keep it nice because like I said, I, I really love this Jeep. But one thing I'm having with this is uh, when I get between, about 60 miles an hour on the highway, it starts shaking and it shakes until I hit about 65. Pretty common thing with Jeeps to do. It's a uh, different mile mileage or different miles per hour that some will do that. If you've had a Jeep, you've probably dealt with it. Uh, and eventually uh, it can get to what's called the death wobble, which this isn't the death wobble, it's controllable, but I've had the death wobble and that's kind of scary when you're going down the highway. So a few things when you start to get that. One is uh, getting alignment, make sure your tires are balanced. That's probably not going to fix it. It'll help a little bit. Uh, a lot of times you got a bad tire. I'm about ready to get new tires on this. I think I'm going to go up a size. And uh, so that's on the agenda. I'm not quite uh, there yet. That's probably a couple weeks out before I do that because tires are kind of expensive on these things. I do have, uh, I have had it aligned, did an alignment on it. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the steering stabilizer, steering dampener on it, which uh, that's basically a shock. I'm going to see if I can get underneath here. You can kind of see it right here. You got a shock right here, and it's pretty simple to change out. But that being said, before I do any work on my Jeep, or on side-by-sides. Uh, usually I try to hit them with a pressure washer because this thing, it goes down gravel roads, it goes down dirt roads, it's off-road, and it's pretty clean under there. It hasn't been too long, but before I work on it, I'm going to hit it with a pressure washer, let it dry, I'm going to coat it with some PB oil, and then I'm going to get under there and start taking it off, and I'll show you how you do it. Okay, so it's the next day after uh, what I just shot, cleaning up the Jeep, and I uh, was a little short on time yesterday with work, but also I wanted to get some PB Blaster and uh, just basically soak the bolts that I've got to take off to do this overnight. So that way, hopefully, it's going to make them just a little bit easier to come off. Now, I've got the Rough Country steering stabilizer is uh, the one that i bought i picked it up off of amazon i'm going to put a link to it in the description uh, there were a couple others there was i think monroe a few other decent brands these things are cheap 25 35 bucks uh you know not not that much and they're pretty easy to change i didn't realize how cheap they were i probably would have done this before now but you know, like I said, I've got a little bit of a shaking. This isn't probably going to do much for that, but it will help the ride. Uh, you know, I'll pretty much as far as when you get the shaking on the Jeep, and I'll probably do another video on that later. But uh, shocks, tires, alignment, uh, pretty much look through everything on the front end. That is, if you got a stock, if I mean, if you got a lift kit, there could be, you know, other things. I mean, I, I think this is going to end up being shocks and tires, but but this will help. And you never know, sometimes you might get lucky and it's something as simple as uh, an alignment. I mean, mine is very mild, so it could be something this simple, but I'm pretty sure I've got a, uh, I've got a tire that uh, is, uh, is probably what's causing it. But anyway, let's get to it. So we're going to crawl underneath and take a look at what has to be removed. All right, I don't know how well you can see it under here, but there's going to be two bolts. There's this one right here, which is the first one that comes off. You've got a cotter pin you've got to take out, and uh, then you have a castle nut. Once that's off, uh, pretty much you can just bang this out. 
I mean, that usually, from what I've seen, people do it. They wait towards the end to get this one out. The other one, and don't, and don't be afraid, if you gotta hit it with a hammer, bang it up, as far as the bolt goes, I mean, don't mess up, you know, the other, you know, anything else on your Jeep. This one over here is a little different. Now, I noticed with this kit, it came with it. In a lot of these kits, this bolt does not come with it. So that's one that uh, you want to definitely be careful with because you're probably either going to have to reuse it or you're going to have to run to the store and get you a replacement since they don't come with the kits. Uh, anyway, but this one here, like I said, you're going to take this cotter pin off. You're going to take the castle nut off. And uh, it should just, just come out. Soaking it ahead of time like I did is probably going to help. And an easy way to take cotter pins off that I found uh, is basically get your pliers, bend these back, get a flathead screwdriver, stick it right in here, and then just use that to pry. And they come out super easy. That's how I usually do it with farm equipment around here. So I can't do this one-handed. I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to start taking these nuts out. So I got the first one off. It is a 19 millimeter socket and I ended up having to get a breaker bar out uh, just because it was so tight on there and get it started. And then I switched to the uh, just a regular socket once I got it loosened up. It's pretty simple to get off. Uh, if you are going to do it, get some mechanic gloves because I did bang up my knuckles a couple of times when the socket slipped, but uh, not too bad. It's in there pretty solid. I'm going to have to hammer it out. I got the big hammer that I'm going to be knocking it with. Like I said, this bolt, not too worried about because it, uh, I do have the replacement. The other one is the one that a lot of these replacements don't come with, so you may be a little gentle with it. Uh, looking at the bolt on it, it was an 18 millimeter on the back side, which you've kind of got to uh, get a wrench. I'm going to use some vice grips just to kind of lock on to so it doesn't move. And then the front side, I believe, was a uh, 15 millimeter. And again, I'm going to start it with the breaker bar. So we're going to start working on knocking this one out now. All in all, this should be about a 10-minute job, which means uh, it's going to be 20 minutes uh, for the average person. Uh, for me, probably going to be 30 minutes because i got some extra hammering to do. But still, not too bad. Let's knock out this last bolt. So far, this has taken quite a bit longer than I thought when I got in there. It was just... Uh, I couldn't hammer the bolt out at all with the hammer. It was just uh, uh, messing up the bolt. And uh, the other bolt just would not budge. So I went and got an impact. And I also went and got a Pittman arm puller, which is what I used on uh, the one that you know, I said I'd be hammering out. And like I said, it wasn't going to budge with the hammer. But... Between the two of those, it worked. I've got it out. Now we're going to put the new one in. All right, now we got the new one in. I'll take it for a test drive. See if it, uh, if I notice any difference. Putting it back in with the right tools was a lot easier. I did end up having to reuse this bolt here. Uh, there was one that was in the pack, but I guess it was like for... Cherokees or GMC, it was for something else. The instructions did say to reuse it, so to be safe, plus it's a heavier bolt, I went ahead and used it. But uh, everything's on, went back on really easy. Like I said, taking it off was a uh, pain, but once I got the impact and the puller, it really wasn't uh, too bad. It came off pretty easy. I mean, I've got 158,000 miles on this Jeep, so... You know, yeah, it's going to be a little tight to get off. Anyway, hope this uh, helped you out. If you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. Maybe give us a like, leave us a comment. It's all appreciated. It helps out the channel. And if you are doing this yourself and, uh, you know, you've got some questions or you run into some problems, 
I'm not an expert, but I'm always happy to help someone out. Till next time, it's Matt with McGee Farms. Have a great day.